Good day, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the show on this 31st, the last day of March, 2021. Thank you for tuning in. You know what? I'm going to tell the truth about the economy. We are actually coming out of a depression right now. And this tepid recovery that I've been talking about for months and months and months is starting. And we're only going to move up to what would normally be a recessionary level rather than depression. We're coming out of a depression. We're, it's going to get a little bit better as the summer progresses. And normally, like when we, it, it's, it's going to be, what it's going to be more like instead of a, a super, a superb economic recovery, it's going to be more like we're entering into a recession. We're still going to be in what, it's not going to be great, but it's going to be enough to get the velocity of money to start to move off of the floor and start to move up a little bit. And, you know, there's these new, uh, this new plan coming out for infrastructure. Massive amounts of money they're going to be spending, but they're going to be raising taxes like anything, you know. Taxes are going to be going up. Uh, let's get started. Let's get the charts open right here. Take a look at what's going on. We're going to start with the silver price today. It's going up. Uh, right now, it's up 31 cents on the day. It's back up to 24.31, you know. Uh, I kind of thought it was a little bit overcooked when it was, a that, that little bit oversold back when they, uh, back when the price was like yesterday and stuff. It was, it was a little bit oversold, you know. Uh, considering what's going on with the money out there, money's exploding, you know, so much of it. Money everywhere, but... Silver price going down, down, down when there's it's hard to obtain supply, you know, of real physical silver. It's in it's in short supply. I mean, it's not not like there's tons of real physical silver out there right now, you know, in the market. In fact, I think they're just struggling to keep their head above water to keep all inventory up in all these different retail silver outlets, you know, around. Uh, let's take a look now at uh, gold. Gold's at set back up to 1703 and climbing. It's up $17 on the day so far. Let's take a look and see what cryptocurrency's doing. Cryptocurrency's doing great. Uh, almost $2 trillion uh, in the industry. Jar darn near, just a shade off of $2 trillion. $1,945 billions, it looks like. Uh, and uh, we're looking at a Bitcoin dominance, 56.5%. Bitcoin dominance is falling. Uh, I've said it back in my shows that the rally is going to end when you see the Bitcoin dominance falling. When you start to see the Bitcoin dominance fall. And then when you start to see the Bitcoin dominance rise again. Right? So so the Bitcoin dominance was over 60%. Now it's down to 56.5. It's doing exactly like I said in previous shows. I said, when you sit, when you, how you know when the Bitcoin rally is getting almost to its finish is when you see the Bitcoin dominance fall. It's falling, right? And then when you see the Bitcoin dominance rise again, the rally's almost over. Uh, what happens is when you're in mid rally, when you're really in the big part, the meat part of the rally. Why you see the Bitcoin dominance fall is because they are so enthusiastic that they're buying into all of, all the altcoins all the way down the list. You know, they're buying in big time. Then what happens is, is when the rally gets ready to end, and see, Bitcoin's done this a number of times before in the past. What happens is, is they start to get worried and they start to switch back to Bitcoin again. They start to sell off some of their altcoins and buy into Bitcoin again for, for safety. So then you see the Bitcoin dominance rise again. And that's when the rally's getting just about over. Because when uh, investors start to run for safety in Bitcoin from the altcoins, the rally is just about over. So we're mid-rally right now with the Bitcoin dominance still falling. Watch that Bitcoin dominance. That's your key to understanding uh, what's going to happen because what you're using is you're using the, all of these investors out there. They're, it shows that's a major indicator I use in the Bitcoin market. 
to understand when the rally is getting ready to come to a close, you know. And because of all this money printing, this rally, we're, I don't think we're going to see the massive drop off like we saw when it went up to 20,000 and it dropped all the way back down like 3,000 bucks. That massive drop in price. When this rally ends, I don't think we're going to see a massive drop in price like that. But we are going to see uh, a drop in price, but not not massively like that last one, you know, uh, uh, where Bitcoin got cut by, what was it, cut by a tremendous amount, you know. We're not going to see that again this time. It's not going to drop huge like it did that last time. It's only going to be more a more moderate fall off while we prepare for the next giant bull bull market in Bitcoin. And that the next one is going to be the big one, guys, the next one. When this bull market in Bitcoin ends, and we go through a period of time, I don't know how long that period would be, gosh, I wish I knew, and it goes back into a, another bull market again, that next one is going to be huge. That's the one that's probably going to take it up to like a million bucks or something like that, you know. So you think the price is high on Bitcoin now? There is no upper limit to where Bitcoin can go. There's no upper limit. And the higher it goes, a couple of things are going to happen. All this talk that, about the Bitcoin network can't support uh, uh, transaction high transaction volumes and it doesn't it doesn't have enough transactions per second and all this stuff. That's not what Bitcoin's going to be used for. They're going by the perception that Bitcoin is going to be used as a means of commerce where everybody's going to use it to buy a cup of coffee. No. That's not Bitcoin's use case. Bitcoin's use case is exactly like gold. They're not constantly... How many people do you see out there trying to buy a cup of coffee with gold? A gold coin? Never. Ever. Gold just sits in the vaults. Doesn't move. That's just, just exactly what Bitcoin's going to do. In fact, when Bitcoin starts to go up to like $500,000... You're going to see transaction volume fall. They're not going to move it. It's going to be used as, as, a, as a store of value. It's going to be used as, a, as, as the real, just like it's digital gold is what it is. It's digital gold. You know, and that's what it's going to, it's going to, it's trying to force gold out as, a, as, a, as, as the, is it's like gold's been the king for thousands of years, a store of value. Bitcoin is trying to push gold out of the nest. Bitcoin's like a cuckoo bird. I'll tell you what a cuckoo bird is. It's this bird that comes along. Okay, a bird's got a nest in a tree, right? And he's got all these eggs. So he sits there and he works hard to hatch all of these eggs, you know, in the nest, right? And the cuckoo bird doesn't do any work at all. He just flies along and he lays his egg in the same nest. Looks like the other eggs. So, so the bird sits on those eggs, you know, and hatches them, all that work and everything. And it, it hatches its baby chicks and everything. And it also hatches the cuckoo bird. Well, what does the cuckoo bird do? He's a little bit bigger chick than the other chicks. He gets his back underneath the other chicks and he pushes them out of the nest. And they fall like 30 feet. And then the cuckoo bird's the only one in the nest. And then the parents come back and they think it's their chick. And they take care of it just like it's their chick. You know? That's what Bitcoin's doing. Bitcoin's the cuckoo bird and it's pushing gold out of the nest. And it's trying to take over quite seriously as, as the new store of value for uh, underlying the whole financial system of the world. And it's got support of all these altcoins, which are like the currencies of the world, you know, like uh, like we have the yen and the yuan, and we had the we have the Great British Pound, and the, uh, we have the American dollar, and so on. Bitcoin's trying to become the world reserve, where all of these other coins that are beneath it are trying to take the place of things like like Ethereum would be taking the place of, of say, the Great British Pound. And, and uh, you got uh, uh, all these other altcoins are, are got a position like the other world currencies. So it's a, it's a 
alternative financial system. It's a whole financial system, an alternative financial system that is growing stronger by the day. And, you know, uh, as far as them stopping it, it's a worldwide phenomenon. In order to stop this, they would have to make a worldwide effort, a united effort. All of the nations on Earth would have to sit down together and they would have to function as a, as a unified body to try to ban this and get rid of it at this point. It would be very, very difficult. Not just one country saying, okay, we're not going to allow Bitcoin, like, like India says, okay, that's it. You know, they ain't going to do it. You got to get all the countries. And when's the last time all of the countries on earth have actually worked together uh, unified? <laughs> you know, this would take a unified effort. Uh, otherwise, this is going to continue to grow within the financial system like a, like a tumor. Dow Jones Industrial Average today. It's up 16 points on the day, 33,083. Let's take a look now at crude oil. 60.59, 60 $60.59. It's up 4 cents on the day. Uh, we're going to take a look at the move index. Move index has been creeping up. Let me see if I can get the one month. It's creeping up a little bit, but it, it basically, is, if you take a look at the chart here over the last month, it's been kind of going sideways. It's creeping up right now. It's at 67.44. It's up 2.24% uh, on the day. Bonds and rates. Well, we're looking at the long end of the yield curve falling. The 10 years at 1.7. The 30 years at 2.37. Uh, I watch the long end more than the short end. And the reason why is, is because the long end is what's giving the trouble. The short end, they have it totally under control, you know, but the long end, the Fed doesn't normally control the long end of the yield curve. But if it gets too high, they will. And what is too high? Uh, I'm sure that they've got a number set. It might be 2%, might be 2.5% on the 10-year, where they're not going to let it cross that uh line in the sand uh, okay so now let's move on and take a look at uh, the US dollar index 9305 the dollar starting to fall today again I think we might have seen a short-term peak in the dollar uh, at uh, let me see what was it uh, 93.36 something like that 93 point yeah 93.36 I think we might have seen a short-term short -term peak in the dollar. Thank you guys for listening to the show. Like and subscribe. Uh, remember, we're moving into this tepid. Tepid meaning not real strong economic recovery. That's going to last until the end of the first quarter of 2022. That's how long it's going to last. And uh, what it's going to do is it's going to set the ball rolling on inflation. The fl inflation's going to start to run away from them after the first quarter, 2022. That's when it's going to start to really get serious. And when this thing really gets moving like that, it's going to move very, very quickly. And I believe that the cryptocurrencies are probably going to go into their next bull run. This, I think this bull run is going to end, and then we're going to go through a period where Bitcoin stuff languishes back and stuff, and there's not the central highlight or anything of the financial system. But it's, it's still growing. Never forget, it, it's actually still growing, even though it kind of settles down a little bit. You know, if we, if we end this bull rally and we kind of settle down a little bit, then we're headed for the next bigger bull rally coming up probably uh second half of 2022 or something like that you know i i can't precisely i i shouldn't even give a date i shouldn't even give a date when i think that next bull rally will come you know but when it hits it's going to be the big one that's going to be the big one you know and that's when you're going to see bitcoin move up to prices where you just can't afford to buy it even unless you're a multi-millionaire you're just not going to be able to afford even one of them
when it moves into that next bull rally after it goes through this. And how low will it go during this next, the low of this next? I don't think it's going to fall off as cheap as it was uh, back when it was, uh, back when it fell off from 20,000. In fact, I, I don't think it's going to make it down to 20,000. I don't think it'll go that low, you know. Uh, uh, and and uh, when it, but when it rises from that, boy, look out! That's going to be the big one. And who's ever got them is going to do all right. Listen, thank you guys for listening, and we'll catch you guys in the next show. Bye bye.